3 a.m. 2022, and uh, I would like to welcome Sri Srikantharaja sir to the dais, who is going to conduct the invited talk, and also uh, uh, HOD Dr. Sanjay and Mai to the dais, please. Good morning and welcome to the first academic session of this conference, National Symposium on Emerging Trends in Applied Mathematics, E-Term 2022, the second of this mode in our college, which is being happening. I'd like to invite and welcome Sri Srikant Raja sir into our midst, who is here from Diagio Kochi. Hearty welcome to here, sir. Please give him a grand clap. I'd like to mention his education qualifications for all, for all of our knowledge. That is, he has acquired his master's from Cochin University in Science and Technology, and he has qualified UGC Net. And he did his BSc Mathematics in a university, Mahatma Gandhi University, and his education occurred in MTech in Computational Science in 2012 from IIT and uh, he is at present working as a scientist at Naval Physical Oceanographic Laboratory which is shortlisted as NPOL, DRDO, Ministry of Defense. And uh, he has been traveling from Kochi to reach here and uh, for your joy I'm telling he has sent his kid off to a school and also has reached here in time for the conference so that uh, he was not able to join the inaugural session but still sir has come over here and was willing to deliver a lecture to you people so that uh, it is easy for us to be experiencing the field of uh, cyber security and also regarding cryptography and uh, for his credits uh, I, I can tell that he was experienced in Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology and he was assistant lecturer there in 2004-2005 and uh, he was in Naval Physical Oceanographic Laboratory and oil in Kochi. He was a scientist B at first, then scientist C, scientist D and now scientist E. So the responsibilities of him include design and development and implement of advanced algorithms for various types of uh, underwater sensory systems for so Indian Navy. I'm happy to note that uh, he's a person who's integrated, having different areas of interest, including computational science, statistical signal processing, etc. And he's a person who's conducted talks and lectures all through the country and outside too. And also, to his credit, he has many publications, ranging up to more than 10. And he's a member of IEEE and life member of AME. He has been a member of advisory panels like the governing body and academic council member in Tiruvalla MacFast. And he is now he's working in NPOL as a senior scientist. E. I'd like to welcome Sri Srikant Raja sir into our midst and over to you, sir. Hearty welcome, sir. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sister Judy, for the introduction. And uh, uh, before starting this talk, first of all, let me congratulate the Department, Department of Mathematics of this esteemed institution for conducting such a wonderful seminar, uh, which gives an insight of uh, applied mathematics to all the budding mathematicians of future. And uh, also, uh, let me express my thanks to the HOD, Dr. Sajay sir, uh, Sister Julie, Dr. Viji, and all the members of this department for giving me an opportunity to 
talk in front of you regarding a subject which I have been working for quite a long time. So uh, this uh, talk basically, uh, I will not be going into the deep theory of uh, target tracking. Uh, I'll uh, try to restrict myself to the application level. That is, I will not go into the deep derivation and out and try to give an insight for an intuitive feeling of what is happening behind some of the theories which you are going to you are learning or you are going to learn in your academics. Okay. So initially, when I was preparing the slide, I I was uh, like trying to restrict myself to a one hour talk, but uh, just now Dr. B G told me that you have uh, enough time to torture you or for uh, about two hours or so. So let us see. Okay. So before going into the talk, let me introduce you to my office, where I come from. So I, as a uh, uh, sister Julie told, I work at an institute called NPOL, which stands for Naval Physical Oceanographic Laboratory. And NPOL is a DRDO lab. How many of you have heard of DRDO? Can you please raise your hand? Good. Okay. So for those who have not heard, DRDO stands for Defense Research and Development Organization. So we work for the different armed forces of our country. So and NPOL specifically works for Indian Navy. Okay. We develop underwater sensors for Indian Navy. And to be more specific, we are into design and development of sonar systems. I hope you might have heard of sonar. Have you heard of sonar? Yes. Okay. It's like an underwater radar. Okay. So radar as such, you cannot use underwater. Do you know what is the reason? Anybody? Yes. Because Radar uses electromagnetic radiation for detecting and ranging a target. And these electromagnetic radiations cannot be used underwater because these electromagnetic waves will not uh, travel for more than a few hundreds of kilometers. Sorry, hundreds of meters. Whereas in sauna, what we use is we use sound waves, also called acoustic waves. And these uh, sound waves can travel up to tens and hundreds of kilometers underwater. So we are mainly into sonar design, which is a part of underwater surveillance. And what do underwater surveillance do? What is the use of underwater surveillance? Can anybody tell? Let this be an interactive talk rather than me talking. Why do we use underwater surveillance? Submarines. Exactly. One is Detecting enemy submarines. You know, submarines are one of the most dangerous and lethal weapons. Once a submarine dives into water, no one can detect. Okay, only the sonar will be able to detect a dived submarine. So that's why this underwater surveillance is of prime importance, especially in defense applications. And not only for uh, detecting submarines, submarines use sonar as a navigation tool. Uh, I think everybody has seen the movie Titanic, right? So if there was a sonar in that Titanic ship, it would not have hit the iceberg. It would have easily detected that. Okay. So submarines use sonar as an aid for navigation as well. In fact, sonar is the only navigation tool available in a submarine. Okay. If you have seen a submarine or if you have seen the picture of a submarine, you can see that it is completely closed. There is no window or nothing. Okay, so just like this, uh, bats and dolphins, they transmit a sound. Sorry, submarines usually don't transmit. They receive echo from a target, and based on that only, they navigate underwater. So these are all part of in defense uh, 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 arena. All these are part of something called the anti-submarine warfare system. And we are the we are one of the few countries who specializing anti-submarine warfare and sonar is an essential part of that right so uh, our expertise include transducers embedded systems underwater communication ocean science signal processing material science optoelectronics etc and over time we have uh, developed different products like ship sonar then submarine sonar airborne sonar that is sonars which can be operated from an aircraft then towed array sonar source sheet and in fact we are now into 
developing toddlers for sonar for submarines, which is a very, very complicated technology. Right? Then underwater communication, coastal surveillance systems. These are the systems which we have developed over the time. Okay. So uh, having said that, uh, this will be the outline of my presentation today. So initially I'll give some introduction to uh, this uh, tracking in the naval uh, sense, naval warfare sense. Then I'll uh, briefly touch upon the estimation theory behind tracking. Then something called bearing only tracking. Now I'll be using this word bearing quite often in this talk. Bearing means something, it is the angle. Suppose you are in a ship and you find out a target at say 45 degree. Then I say that the bearing of the target is 45 degree. So bearing is nothing but angle. Okay. Then the mathematical models used in bearing only tracking. Then on platform dynamics. On platform dynamics means uh, if you are on a ship and hunting for a target, then the uh, the uh, dynamics which you use, how you navigate, has a very significant effect on this BOT, uh, this tracking uh, philosophy. So how it is, we will come to that. Then Bayesian framework, which I think some of the master students of statistics will be. Uh, familiar with how you use how do you use a Bayesian framework for tracking a target? Then something called Kalman filter, which is uh, one of the main uh, what do you call main algorithms, the bread and butter of most of the tracking algorithms which are presently being used. And finally, I will conclude with some of the practical challenges that we developers face while developing a tracking system. Right. So let us start. What is tracking? What exactly is tracking? So one way of defining it is processing some measurements to estimate the state of something and to maintain that state. Okay. For example, I'm sure you all will be using smartphones, right? So you take a smartphone and you're going to take the photo of your friend. So immediately you find that there is a square coming on the face of your friend, right? You notice that. Now if your friend moves to some other place, the square also moves along, right? So what is that? That is exactly tracking. The smartphone is tracking your friend's face. Okay. So what the smartphone does, it captures the frame. That is what measurement, taking the measurement. After that, it maintains the state. It, it keeps track of the frame of your face. Right. So the measurement along with the process of maintaining a particular frame, that is called a tracking. Right. This is a very simple example of tracking. Now let us come to our uh, uh, naval sense. So suppose uh, you are trying to track a target. There is some submarine target out there. You are in a naval ship and uh, it has some sensors, which is a part of the sonar. And what the sensors that is, it uh, captures all the data that is coming to it. It could be signal, there could be noise, everything. Okay. And once you get those uh, signals, some sort of processing called signal processing is done on that. Again, signal processing is also 99% mathematics. So it, it, it includes some scaling, it includes some time shifting, convolution operation, F of T's, other transforms. So such a uh, sequence of processing is done on that, which helps to reduce the noise content. The sensor, when they capture the signals, lot of noise comes into that and this signal processing helps to reduce the noise and bring up the actual signals present in that. Okay. Now, once you get the signal, a signal, I mean, you to go to the guy, you he won't understand that. So the next step is to extract meaningful information from that. Okay. Just like our uh, smartphone example, smartphone, after the processing, all the, uh, all what you have is a sequence of numbers. Adina, you need to identify that face and to keep track of that face and present it on the display of the smartphone. That is done in the information processing side. Okay, so our tracking mainly comes in the information processing block of this diagram. And finally, it is sent to the display and command center. So this is a receiver chain sequence which, which is happening while tracking a target, right? Now, if you try to go through the literature of tracking, you might find some, uh, what you call, interchangeably used terms like 
estimation, tracking, filtering, which all might you might feel that all these are the same, but there are subtle differences with, uh, in these terms. So let us see what these are. Estimation, you all are quite familiar, right? How many of you have done a course in estimation? Anybody? In your statistics courses, you might have studied estimation, right? MMSE estimate, mean square estimation, maximum likelihood, right? So what is estimation? It is a process of inferring the value of a quantity from indirect inaccurate measurements, right? For example, if I want to find the average height of all the students in this college, so I cannot go and find the height of each and every student, right? So what possibly I can do is I can take the height of everybody in this and take the average, which is an estimate of the average height of this college, right? So uh, all the heights which I take from each one of you, those are the measurements. So using that measurement, I estimate the height, right? So that is estimation. Now, what is tracking? Now, tracking comes when there is some dynamics involved. Dynamic means some movement of object, physical movement, changing over time. Okay. So, just like your, again, we'll come back to that uh, smartphone example. Your friend is moving. So, there is some movement of object. So, you're trying to estimate the state or position of a moving object. That is called tracking. Okay. And filtering is uh, somewhat related to the tracking only. It is an estimation of the current state. As I told, over time it will be varied. Okay. And at this point, at the current point, what is the estimate of that? What is the best estimate of your uh, state? That is called filtering. So you need not go deep into the uh, definition and all. Just mention that. These three terms you have to be aware of. So this is the block diagram of uh, what is called a state estimation. Okay. So uh, again, I will come back to that naval sense. So suppose there is a target out there which has its own dynamics. Okay. And uh, the target will have some state. When I say state of the target, it can be its position, it can be its velocity, or some other physical parameter or kinematic parameter. Okay. So there is some state which we don't know. We are trying to estimate that okay and there is a sensor system which measures something from the dynamics that need not be directly in the state it can be some other function of the state as well which again has its own errors the sensor will have its own error i think there may be some hardware error and around there can be software errors so that error also creeps into this and what i get i will be sitting in that state estimator what I will be getting is a noisy measurement and I need to use that noisy measurement to estimate the state, right? So again, tracking, I'm not going into the detail. Uh, the sensor captures uh, acoustic or electromagnetic signals and the signals undergo some signal processing, which I told just now. And using those measurements, we try to track that comes in the information processing, right? Okay, now let's come to uh, our area. Underwater tracking. Okay, am I audible without the mic? Is it okay if you move around? Okay, so uh, I like uh, walking and taking the class. Otherwise, it will, uh, you will feel very monotonous. Right, so underwater tracking. Let us come to our area of underwater target tracking. So broadly, this can be divided into two categories. One is active tracking, the other one is passive tracking. So as the name says, active tracking means you are in a ship. Okay. The sensor or the sonar fitted in the hull of the ship, it transmits a sound wave. Okay. And that sound wave will travel through the ocean water. It will hit on some objects, possibly targets. It could be the ocean floor, anything. And the echo is returned. And based on the echo, you try to analyze what is the target. Is it a stationary target? Is it moving? If it's moving at what pace, in what direction? You try to extract all sorts of information from that. That is called active tracking. On the other hand, passive tracking means no transmission is there. 
you simply listen to what is happening outside probably there will be another sheep there you try to listen to the noise made by that sheep and try to estimate its position and uh, passive tracking is mainly done in submarines you know one thing uh, in a war scenario not only in war scenario whenever a submarine dies under water it will never transmit do you know what is the reason can anyone tell why a submarine does not make any noise why is it very silent correct because once you make a sound the enemy ship will know that he is hiding inside and he will be able to track you very easily so a submarine never transmit it always runs in a passive mode of operation so whatever tracking i am going to tell in this will be passive tracking okay okay so this is a pictorial representation of what i told so uh, suppose i am in the submarine uh, that green waves are that uh, uh, what you call it, the sound waves that is transmitted if it transmits and it get the echo and then try to analyze the target and in passive mode it will not uh, transmit simply listens to the noise made by the target ship okay okay now we will come to something called the bearing only tracking so bearing as i told bearing means angle i am using this word bearing because that is a standard terminology used elsewhere so in bearing only tracking the submarine or the target which is tracking the enemy he will be receiving only the angle at which this target is present so sub, i am in a ship i get that there is a target at 45 degree another target at say minus 45 degree another at 180 degree i have three targets around me so the all the information that i am having is this angle now my question is using this angle alone will you be able to pinpoint the location of the target it's a question logically what do you think you you know that just uh, i think that you have you have closed your eyes you are getting some sound from say minus 45 degree okay you know that along this line of sight there is some target okay now my question is will you be able to exactly identify the location of the target identify the speed of the target identify the course of the target course means in which direction it is moving so intuitively what do you feel is it possible or not no okay uh, dr vg what she said is that if you continuously get the target it is possible right what's your opinion yes or no no she won't tell you anything you can tell your opinion independently okay i what i'll do is uh, after around say 30 40 slides i'll ask this question again okay okay now uh, coming to bot there are different methods which is employed for bearing only tracking or angle only tracking one is called triangulation then there is called horizontal direct passive ranging horizontal direct passive ranging means uh, the sound signals which is transmitted from a target they have spherical wave fronts right so if you can somehow estimate the radius of curvature of that signal in that case you will be able to find out the range but finding out that radius of curvature is an extremely difficult task we don't have sensors which can accurately find out the radius of curvature similarly vertical direct passive ranging same thing can in the vertical uh, plane then there are some graphical methods then some estimation techniques which we will discuss and other numerical techniques as well okay now uh, consider this situation there is a submarine target out there and you have two sensors placed sensor 1 and sensor 2 okay and each of the sensor detects the target and sensor 1 says that it is at theta 1 and sensor 2 says that it is at theta 2 and you know the distance between these sensors is say d 
Now again I am asking, will you be able to pinpoint the target? Yes, right? And how do we do that? With, with which law? Yeah, you can complete the triangle and you root the you use the rule of sines, right? And you can find out all the angles. Now another way of looking at it is that assume that the target is stationary, it is not moving. Okay. Very important. Assume that the target is not moving. You have a prior information that the target is not moving. Now you take the first measurement from here, then go to the second place, go move a distance of D, again take a second measurement, then also you can do the same thing. Right? So if the target is constant, if you take measurement from two distinct places, then you will be able to track it down. Okay. So that point is important because I will come back to this in a couple of slides. Now, assume that you don't have a static sensor. You are in this ship and you are going to track that submarine. Okay. So initially, you detect the ship, you get an angle, then both of you are moving. Okay. The ship is also moving, you are also moving. And then you take the measurement. Now in this case, again I am asking, can you track that target? Yes, you can tell your intuition, yes or no. Yes or no, louder please. Sure. Okay, we will uh, check it out. Actually the answer is no. Because here both the ship and the submarine is moving in a straight line. Remember, straight line. In that case, you will not be able to track that ship. In the previous case, the ship, the target was stationary and you were moving. Then you can track. In this case, the target is also moving. You are also moving at a constant speed without changing the direction. In that case, it will be difficult to track. It is impossible. Right. But there is a method. Okay. For that, you have to understand something called dynamic systems okay dynamic system i think in msc you are having a paper right in the paper and not no okay dynamic system means nothing you are trying to study the dynamics of a moving object so it's nothing but some differential equations okay you are less the rate of change and some theories behind that so dynamic system is any system which changes over time okay mathematically it's a function that describes the dependence of a point in space, time dependence, right, a point in space which is moving in time, so it will have its own rate of change, how do you model the rate of change of that point, so all those steps come in this dynamic systems, for example, the position of the tip of a swinging pendulum keeps on changing, right, then the, say, uh, water flow in a pipe, that is, the volume of water that comes from a tap, in one second that if you open the uh, if you regulate the flow it keeps on changing right in the position of a moving car you can track a moving car ernagulam trishur route la or 120 km speed la vannal correct or flash mill nu oru thonnu illa and after one week you get a speed post how do they do that they track illa that is tracking there also, what is being used is this dynamic system modeling. Okay. And broadly, there are two types of uh, dynamic system. One is linear dynamic system and the other one is called the non-linear dynamic system. So, what is a linear dynamic system? And not a linear dynamic system. Or what is a non-linear dynamic system? Okay, we will come to that. So, initially we will talk about a linear dynamic system or continuous time stochastic stage space model. If you don't get to bed, you can do it. It's simple differential equation. Okay, only thing there is a noise term coming here. Okay, that's why it is called a stochastic space space model. And this is the discrete time counterpart of that. Okay, so I'll briefly explain. I'll try to give a intuitive feel of this. Uh, discrete time model. Okay, again, uh, I will try to relate it with our 
tracking model. Okay. Assume that you are going to track me, my position. Okay. At time k, I am here. Right? At time k plus 1, I am moving to this position. k plus 2, I am going to this position. So, this path, if you can represent using a mathematical equation, that is the state equation. That is, the state at k plus 1 is some function of state at k plus some other things which uh, which is a generalized version it's called input vector and also some noise because i'll be trying to move in a straight line but it might, need not be exactly a straight line so we have variations in the one right that is modeled in the this noise part okay so that is called the state equation it tells you how that state transits or transforms in time. That is state equation or another. Then there is something called measurement equation. Okay. So what is measurement equation? You are just watching me moving, right? Okay. Uh, if you are given an IR device, which gives the distance from you to me. Okay. So that will be measuring my position, right? So the position which you see has to relate with my exact xy position. Okay. Ningala measure the in the position has to be related to my xy position. Sometimes it will be equal. In that case, this can be an identity matrix. Sometimes it need not be. Just like in bearing only tracking. We are measuring the angle and trying to identify the position. Right. Our measurement varana state is different. So, but there is some mathematical relation between these two. And that is captured in measurement equation. Now, a state equation and a measurement equation, these two characterize a dynamic system. Mathematically, a dynamic system in the world, it will have a state equation which tells you how the state evolves in time. And a measurement equation which tells you how the state is going to be related with your measurement. Right? Now, if either of this is a nonlinear function, then you will have a nonlinear dynamic system. Otherwise, it is a linear dynamic system. Okay, are you getting the point? All of you are with me? Good. So, now in our uh, bearing only tracking sense, let us try to model bearing only tracking in terms of linear or nonlinear dynamic systems. Okay, so I will come back to a little bit of mathematics. It's a simple not a simple uh, trigonometry. So suppose you have a target which is shown in this red color, and you are trying to track it from the blue color on ship, which moves around that blue line. Okay, so initially this is your on ship position. That is the initial target position. So in this notation, wherever you see a superscript O, it represents on ship. And wherever you see a superscript T, it represents target. Okay. Now I'm going to define the state, the state of on ship and, uh, and target. Okay. So my state will have four components. It is a four by one vector. The first two components will be the position coordinates, X and Y position. The third and fourth component will be the x and y velocities of the target and on ship. Okay. Now what I do is I define a relative state vector, relative state of the target with respect to my position. So that will be target state minus on ship state. That is called the relative position. Number ship in Ulil and the position. That is the relative state. Okay. So this is the relative state. And I drop off the superscript so that the state vector looks a bit more simple. Okay, this much is it okay? Any doubt? Okay or no? Fine. So we have the target state, on ship state, and the uh, relative state vector. Now we assume that a very major assumption. Both the on-ship 
and the target follows a constant velocity. Constant velocity in one the one speed the direction change and the animation the console both on ship and target. Right. So constant velocity means for any k the x and y velocities at time k plus 1 will be equal to the corresponding x and y velocities at time k for every k. Okay. Now how does it propagate in space? Space like another one another. Are you familiar with this equation? Have you seen those equations? Our plus two is physics really very simple. Newton's law of motion. Ila final velocity equal to initial velocity plus correct. Sorry, final position is initial position plus time into velocity. That is this equation I have written for target and on ship. So this is the only math involved in the formulation of DOT problem. Okay, it is clear again. If you have any doubt, please feel free to stop me. Okay, because I can't agree with you. Then the rest of the talk will be very good. Okay, so I have written down the equation here, and this equation I am writing it in a matrix form. Okay, so you can see, sorry. Yeah, this F matrix I think I have. Okay, actually this T should have come here. Okay, so it will be XT at K plus 1 will be X at K plus 0 into this. Plus actually this should have been T, sorry for the uh, error here. Time into velocity. Similarly, this, this also would have been T. Okay, so this is a matrix formulation of the on ship tra uh, target trajectory and on ship trajectory. Okay, only the, the above equations I wrote in the form of a matrix multiplication. Okay, so I can do the same for the relative vector also. Relative vector also I can write in the form of a matrix multiplication. So I call capital XK plus 1 as a state equal to some FK into XK. Right, so that is a linear transformation of the state from k to k plus 1. So we have arrived at the first equation, the state equation. Can you run a good under? What is that? That is a measurement equation. So how do you get that? The angle theta k. So if you look at this diagram, diagram this is theta 0. So tan theta 0 will be this divided by this, right? For uh, for any any value of uh, time index, okay. so it will be the x difference by y difference. That is what is written there, and the x difference is the x component of the relative state. So I can write my state equation, uh, sorry, measurement equation as zk. Zk instead of theta k, I am using zk here. Okay. So zk is tan inverse of the first component of the relative state by second component of the relative state vector. So that is the relation between your state vector and measurement. So you have a state transition equation and a measurement equation. Now what is the issue here? What is the issue? You find any difficulties in this? The measurement equation is non-linear. Measurement equation is non-linear which is a nightmare for any engineer. Okay. What we love to see is a linear model. Non-linear models always create problems. Okay, so how do you do? How do you go about that? So uh, there are well-known techniques to estimate the state of a dynamic system for linear as well as non-linear. For non-linear, it would be difficult, but for linear systems, there are well-known estimation algorithms okay so our mathematically our problem is for every k estimate this xk so what is xk it is a relative position and velocity relative means target minus on ship so if you find relative state 
we can easily find out the target state. Hello, I'm going to on shift state add it. Okay, so when you come to this estimation problem, statistical estimation problem, broadly it can be divided into two. One is called classical estimation, uh, that is called Bayesian estimation. In Bayesian estimation, what you assume is that the quantity which you are going to estimate, that is here xk, it is a random quantity. Okay, so it will have its own distribution and based on its pro the properties of the distribution, you find out what you want to estimate. Okay? Whereas in classical estimation, the state is assumed to be non-random. Okay, like uh, maximum likelihood estimate, you might have studied, least square estimate. These are examples of classical estimation. Okay, so we, we'll, what in this part, what we'll do is, we'll uh, uh, look at one method from classical estimation and another from Bayesian estimation. Okay. So again, coming back to our problem. So we are trying to do a classical estimation to be more precise a least square estimate to find out the state vector. Okay. So we have our theta k here. Theta k is the bearing or the angle at any time. That is tan inverse x by y. Okay. Usually we take tan inverse y by x, right? Here y is it is tan inverse x by y. Can you tell? Exactly. Usually, we take the angle theta with respect to the x-axis. But in tracking and navigation, always y-axis is assumed to be the true north. And the bearing is always taken with respect to true north. That's why it is tan inverse. R tan is actually tan inverse. Tan inverse of x by y. Now, we'll do some basic algebra. So, xk is, again, Newton's law. Initial position plus time into velocity. Similarly for the y coordinate also. Now bring the tan to this side and cross multiply, you will get this equation. Okay, and that equation holds for every k from 0 to say n. Okay, so for each k, you are getting an equation in four variables. What are the four variables? The components of our state vector. So you stack all the equations, what you get is something like this. An equation of the form ax equal to zero. Homogeneous equation. Homogeneous equation, what is the default solution? Zero is the solution. So do you have any use with that? So what do you do? So is there any way you can convert this into a non-homogeneous equation? Okay. So here in this what is done is, you know that uh, the relative state contains on shift coordinate, uh, sorry, on shift state and the target state. Right? And we assume that both are moving with a constant velocity. Now, what you do is you introduce a change in velocity, introduce an acceleration to the on shift. The on shift is straight to one either it increases the speed or decreases the speed or change its course, course in a direction. Okay, I'm going to remember the victim. There is another term coming up in this velocity term. And using that term, if you rearrange the equation, you get an equation with a non zero right, right hand side of the form ax equal to b. And I forgot to tell this matrix and the matrix in the uh, homogeneous part, both are full rank matrix. Okay. Full rank gamma, what is the advantage? It is, uh, no, actually this is a n by 4 matrix. It's a tall matrix, right? It's a full rank, so you get a unique least square solution. Okay, that is a resultant linear algebra. Okay, so you can directly solve for x. So you get the relative state. From that, you can get the target state, that is target position and velocity. Now again, coming back to the question. Can you track using bearing only? Is it possible? So the first case we saw that we assume the target to be stationary and the on-ship moves. Then you can track. 
using angle only. Second case, the target is moving in a straight line. On shape is maneuvering. It is not uh, doing a straight course. Okay, it is accelerating. Our case here, you can track the target. Now, what if the target accelerates? Intuitively, what do you say? Target accelerated in the victim. You change your rate of acceleration. Okay. So, the theory behind it, what I want to convey is that whatever will be the target dynamics, if your motion model is one degree higher than the target, theoretically you will be able to track it. That is the gist of the story. Okay. Borai Tarangando. Is it okay? Last two point. Last two point. Suppose the target is set as stationary point and you are moving from one point to another point. Our target in the motion is zero to degree motion. And your first order motion. In that case, you are able to track. Second case, target is moving in a straight line. First order motion. And you are accelerating. You have an acceleration. So V plus UT plus half GT square. You are, you are model is second order model. Then also you will be able to track. Now, if uh, target is doing an acceleration, it has a second order model, then you will have to go for third order model. Half GT square plus 1 by 6 into T raised to 4. Acceleration to T raised to 4. Okay. So the, it keeps on going like that. That is the theory behind, but actually in practice, once the target accelerates, you cannot do anything because the solution becomes very complicated and literally you cannot do anything. You have to restart your tracking procedure. That is practically what is being done. Okay. That is the difference between applied math and pure math. So all pure math is not readily available for application. Right? So that is an example of a classical estimation problem. So this is the moral of the story. If on ship maneuver is on ship maneuver means on ship change in speed or course. Okay. It is absolutely necessary for attaining solution in a passive BOT ranging problem. Okay. Now um, okay, I'll show you one slide which picturizes this entire theory in one single slide. Just look at this for a moment and see if you, you are able to understand the theory. Just uh, one minute, you can glance at this slide. See if you are able to make out the theory. Any idea? Okay, I'll tell. So here we have our own ship moving first in this direction and in the other direction. Now consider this part alone. Okay. That at each of this point, the on ship is making an angle measurement of the target. So here the on ship knows that the target is somewhere in this line. At this point, on ship knows that the target is somewhere in this line. Where information is known. So if you consider this first leg alone, assume a target which is moving at 6 nautical mile speed at the, in this direction, at this range. So this target will be subtending this bearing lines, right? Similarly, another virtual target, which is moving at a faster speed, at a higher range, will also subtend the same bearing lines. The third one, with a higher speed. So like that, you can construct infinite number of possible traje target trajectories which can give you the same bearing lines. Okay. Now, the same thing if you consider this leg alone. How the same situation, Anna? For these bearing lines, you can construct infinite number of bearing lines. But, there will be only one unique target trajectory which satisfies both these legs. And that is a unique least square solution. Okay, this is a intuitive picture of what we have learned. Okay. Right, now. So now let us move on to a Bayesian estimation. 
Do you require a break for five minutes or so? Okay, then let's break for five minutes. Okay, around uh, 12 10 you can come back. Then we will discuss Bayesian estimation. Okay.
Okay, shall we return? Can we continue? Okay. So we saw an example of classical estimation, right? Now what we are going to see is something called Bayesian estimation. Okay. So uh, again, we are coming back to our dynamic system, we saw what is a dynamic system. We understood what is bearing only tracking. It then we saw how to model bearing only tracking in terms of a dynamic system. Okay, so this is a linear dynamic system. And this block diagram, what you see, this is something which is frequently used in something called the control theory. Okay, so it is only a pictorial representation of these two equations. So if you see, uh, you have a state vector at xk. And you multiply by it by the state transition matrix F, and a noise is added to that. That is the this one Fx plus W, you get Xk plus one. Right. And this Z inverse, it, is, it, it represents a time delay. In this control theory, this is sometimes called a delay function. So you will uh, apply a one step time delay here. Again, you get Xk, and this cycle continues. Now again, xk, you multiply it with h in our observation matrix in our, uh, what you call, measurement equation and add a measurement noise, what you get is yk, that is our measurement. So these two equations are captured in this block, gram, block diagram, which is called a state space diagram. So it is a pictorial representation of this system, this equation. Okay. So again, we are coming back to our uh, uh, dynamic system model of bearing only tracking. So we derived this equation and where we were stuck is this equation, the measurement equation, which is non-linear, okay, which is creating trouble. So how do you address this equation? How do you address non-linearity? So there's a, you will find something which is very familiar to you. How many of you have heard of Taylor series representation of a function? Taylor series in second year or you all have studied. And then, yes. So when you write in an exam, you simply write it down, but you never realize there is some application for this. Apparently, we are using Taylor series in everything in use and down Right. So this is something which is initially a little hard to digest. Like when I also started using this. Taylor series uh, linearization or approximation, it was very difficult for me to digest. Like how you are going to approximate a nonlinear function with a linear function. Okay. So a function suppose f, it has all the nice properties and it admits a Taylor series representation. Now what you do is to 
take the coefficient of x alone. So you get something like this del of f of x naught into x. So you are going to approximate this with this term alone. Okay. I know it, it, it will be hard to digest because there can be errors in this, but still that is a standard procedure. Okay. Used in applied engineering. So you have that h of x k and that h of x k which is a tan inverse function you are going to replace it with a matrix and the components of the matrix are the derivative of tan inverse with respect to each of the coordinate of the state vector okay it is called the taylor series linearization it's a standard technique which is applied in many branches of engineering okay so you uh, all that you need to know is that you use Taylor series to approximate a nonlinear function with a linear function. Okay, so what I have is instead of that tan inverse x, now I am having a linear dynamic system. Now I will be very comfortable to estimate. There are a lot of techniques available in literature which can estimate the state of a linear dynamic system. So what I have done is I converted a nonlinear function to a linear function with the help of Taylor series approximation. Now, once you get a linear function, as I told, the bread and butter of every estimation algorithm that is called Kalman filter. Okay, it's a it's an algorithm that estimates the state of a linear dynamic system which is perturbed by zero mean uncorrelated Gaussian noise or normal noise. Okay, so I will come to the details of Kalman filter in a couple of slides. Before that, what I want you, you to understand is something called Bayesian framework for estimation. What is done in Bayesian framework? So just quickly visit Bayesian framework. Actually, this is a very interesting theory, especially for statistics measures. Uh, do you have a paper on Bayesian estimation? Any statistics majors are here? MSc statistics? Anybody? Please raise your hand. Only one. Okay. Uh, so uh, actually, the, uh, this is an extensively used theory in uh, your theory of inference and all. You come across this Bayesian inference quite a lot of time. Okay. So here again, I will not go into the deep theory. I'll try to give a intuitive picture rather than going into the theory of Bayesian estimation. So as I told in Bayesian estimation, we assume that the state which we are going to estimate is a random variable. So if you want to know everything about a random variable, what should you have? What is it that characterizes a random variable? Yes, please tell. No issues. Yes? Expectation, something more. Expectation is derived from that. It will have a distribution. Okay. If you if you want to know everything about the random variable, you need to know its distribution. Every random variable will have a distribution. So identifying that random that distribution means you are completely characterizing that random variable. Okay. So you have our state which now onwards we will assume that it is a random variable okay which we don't know and we want to what do we, we want to completely characterize that state okay so you are going to find out the distribution of the state now again there are two types of distribution coming in this Bayesian framework one is called a prior distribution other is called a posterior distribution Prior distribution, now you can understand it is, you know, there is a measurement happening. Are you There is a measurement. Using that measurement, you are trying to estimate the state. Okay. So before getting the measurement, you have some idea about the state. Other than the prior information over in there. So before the measurement. If you know everything about that the random variable, if you know the distribution, that is called the 
prior distribution or a priori distribution now once you get the measurement you will have a better idea of that state right maybe you can upgrade that to a new distribution right so that is called posterior distribution okay are you all with me any doubt should i repeat say yes or no either yes or no okay right so uh, this is the recursive cycle that is happening in a bayesian estimation so you start with a posterior distribution k minus 1 time la you have estimated your random variable you have estimated your state you know everything about your state you know its distribution everything okay so that is the posterior distribution at k minus 1 kinda time la okay now what you are going to do is you are going to predict what is going to be the distribution at time k okay right k minus 1 only you have done all the homework you know everything about xk xk minus 1 all the distribution of xk minus 1 everything you know now you are going to predict what is going to come in time k okay right k is a prior distribution and you are going to find out and once you get, know the prior distribution then comes the measurement and measurement will carry some information regarding that xk alla right? and you use that measurement to update this to the posterior at the present time k okay are you getting my point and then the cycle continues from k you will predict the prior distribution at k plus 1 receive the measurement at k plus 1 update the distribution at k plus 1 then to k plus 2 so this is a recursive cycle so it's it's called a recursive bayesian estimation framework okay so this is the idea behind recursive bayesian estimation now uh, how do you do this how do you do all this you have a posterior distribution and from that how do you predict the prior distribution at the next time and from there how do you again find the posterior at k how do you do that there are some statistical or probability principles or uh, theorems which help you do that one is called bayes formula bayes formula are you uh, aware of you are aware of right so i am not going in the detail this is just the bayes formula your p of x y is p of x given y into p of y similarly you can find it the other way also okay so using those two equation you come in this base formula and which is nothing but this part is called the likelihood likelihood means uh, how well your measurement is fitting your model that is the intuitive idea of likelihood okay then your prior information divided by the evidence similarly another result is called chapman kolmogorov equation which you might study in your probability papers uh this is the chapman kolmogorov equation p of x given y is integral over all z p of x given z to p of p of z given y these two results are being used if you uh, if you google it you can get the complete details of uh, base formula and chapman kolmogorov equation so now let us see how we are going to use it in our framework okay so you have a at k minus 1 you have done the complete estimation you have studied the distribution you have identified everything regarding x k minus 1 using all the measurement till k minus 1 that capital z k minus 1 is the set of all measurements starting from initial point z not or z1 to k minus 1 okay so you know everything about x k minus 1 at time k minus 1 now i want to know the prior at k okay that is distribution of xk given measurements up to k minus 1 is that k the k the measurement we have not yet received so we are estimating the prior pdf okay so that is using the chapman kolmogorov equation integral over all xk minus 1 sorry i have missed the index here integral over all xk minus 1 p of 
xk given xk minus 1 into p of xk minus 1 given xk minus 1. Now once you get the prior, then you receive zk, your measurement time k. And then you use the base formula to compute the posterior distribution. This is the general framework I am telling. Okay. Now when we come to our application, my assumption is that my state and measurement noises, they are Gaussian distribution. Now what is the speciality of Gaussian distribution? How will you characterize Gaussian or a normal distribution? Okay. Normal distribution, what all do you need to characterize a normal distribution? PDF and the, what is the PDF of a normal distribution? Can you say? 1 by sigma into root of 2 pi e raised to minus x minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square. Right. If you know mu and sigma, you completely know the distribution. Right. Now if I assume that my xk is a ran normal random variable, if I know its mean and covariance, I know the entire distribution. Right. So this framework, the Bayesian framework gives me a closed form solution to find out the mean and covariance of xk at every time, every time instant. That is the beauty of this Kalman filter. And Kalman filter under linear Gaussian assumption is the most optimal estimation method. Okay, you cannot get a better estimate than that. Right? So, as I said, Kalman filter is an algorithm that estimate the state of a linear dynamic system which is filtered by zero mean uncorrelated Gaussian noise. Uncorrelated, have you, you know that, right? Okay. So, uh, again, as I said, it uses two steps, a prediction step, that is predicting the, predicting the, what is that? In the prediction, uh, prior distribution at xk and then update it or correct the prior to get the posterior distribution. For number case, since we are having a Gaussian assumption, all we need to find is the mean and covariance. Okay, so that is what happens in a uh, estimation technique called the Kalman filter. Again, if you uh, look at the literature, there are beautiful theory behind this. Uh, if you can, uh, if you are interested, you can go through how uh, how this uh, Kalman filter equations are derived. That's very interesting, Anna. But I am not going into the derivation of Kalman filter. Again, here I'll try to give an intuition of what is happening in this. Okay. So uh, in the prediction step, we are predicting the prior PDF. Okay. Prior PDF, Anna. This is the this cap indicates an estimate. Okay. You have the mean and the P is the covariance. Okay. Again, this um, notations might be slightly confusing. So here, uh, if you see, I have written X cap of K given K minus 1, which means the estimated mean of the state vector where we have mesh at time K, where we have measurements up to K minus 1. That is the meaning. Uh, it might be slightly confusing, but once you go through it two, three times, it will be okay. So what you have is the updated mean at k minus 1. Okay, so using that, using our state transition model, you find out the, find out the mean at, the prior mean at k and the prior covariance at k. Actually, there are uh, some derivations for this. Uh, actually, what you do is take an expectation here, and because of our, our zero no, uh, zero mean assumption, there was a noise term, right? So that noise term cancel cancels out, and you get this equation. And uh, again, uh, for p k k minus one also, there is a small uh, derivation, just two three lines of uh, algebraic sim simplification, and you get this one. And here, this q is the covariance of our process a uh, state vector the state equation the there was a noise term right other than the covariance on a q number in the 
Now, once you have the predicate state and covariance, then you find out the posterior mean and covariance. Okay, again, there are some uh, derivations for this, but I'm skipping the derivation, and this is the final result. Okay. Uh, now, again, you have the uh, state space diagram for this uh, set of four equations. Uh, I will not go through this uh, again. You can uh, I'll leave the slide here. You can have a relook at it. Now, uh, there is something in interesting here. Just we will see the state update. Okay. How the prior state is updated to the posterior one. So, there is some intuitive meaning for this. So, you have this uh, uh, predicted state and you get the measurement here. Okay. Now, how you are going to land upon the updated state? So, what you do is your predicted state plus this WK is called like gain term into a correction factor. Now, what is this correction factor? You get the measurement at K and you have a predicted measurement. What is predicted measurement? Now, you get a predicted state in that. If that was my state, what would be my measurement at that time? You have a measurement equation. So, measurement equation, if you have a state, you can get the measurement. So, predicted state in you can get the predicted measurement. Now, the difference between the actual measurement and the predicted measurement, it gives you a uh, hint of how good your model is. If your model is perfect, the difference would be zero. But if there is some noise in that or if your model is imperfect, this will be a non-zero quantity. And this weight term WK, this is also interesting. Actually, if you look at the derivation of this weight, this is the expression for the weight. Okay, so forget about all this complicated uh, symbols and all. In this weight term, this pk k minus one is the predicted covariance of the state, and this term is the covariance of this error term. Okay, so and it has an inverse here. So, if you uh, try to intuitively analyze that, it is a ratio of two covariance. Plan. Just uh, an intuition I am telling. It is a ratio of two covariance. Now, what happens if this error becomes large? Error is large at one angle. Here, this denominator term will be large. And this weight will become less. So, you will be more relying in on the predicted state. Error code the learning, we don't want to absorb that. So this weight becomes small. So you are more, more relying on the predicted state. You got a model learner, you are going to give more importance. Okay, so that is just the uh, intuitive explanation of uh, the Scalman gain. Yeah, so uh, so this is how this Scalman filter works. So once you get the uh, updated state, that is a relative state, you can find out the target state by adding the on-chip state. Okay. Now, yeah, there are, uh, this I will skip for now, because there is, this is something called uncentered Galvan filter, which takes care of the, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, this linear, uh, Gaussian assumption is here, right? So, if you use this filter, you can, uh, Skip those assumptions. Even for non-Gaussian cases, also you can. I, I'm not going to the detail of this. I'll skip this for now. Doing this. Yeah, this is something called multi-model estimator, where instead of a single model, you can use multiple models and try to fuse the outputs of these models. This also I'll skip for now. Yeah. Yeah, and this is uh, some of the simulation where we have used our estimation techniques. Uh, that red color line is a simulated target trajectory. The tar target is trying to move in this red colored line. And this pink colored is a own ship trajectory. As I said, uh, for the scenario to converge, 
this on sheet has to take a manual so it is doing some x like manuals here right so uh, the black and the blue one are the two different estimate estimators uh, it's just similar to uh, kalman filter only but a different variant of kalman filter so you can see how our estimate is trying to track the actual target trajectory okay this is just a simulation so uh, this is uh, how uh, now what we have learned is a classical estimation and a bayesian estimation which is actually uh, being used in our real systems some variants of that is being used now let us see uh, what are the practical challenges that we face as developers of this tracking systems okay uh, you know radar display kandu kandu at least in some movies also for a black background for a patcha dots ok kandu le and there some you know red square one thing ina target ne track ina kana so that is a radar display a sonar display looks something like this now how to interpret this you have two targets this is our own ship it is tracking one target at 20 degree another target is at minus 60 degree okay so in the display it will be something like this so at 20 degree a green patch will appear this is the time axis okay so as the ship moves this line will go slanting towards which direction it is moving similarly minus 60 is 300 there are also a green patch will appear okay so those are in in sonar terms they say these are called target detections so if you look at the, uh, if you look at this window you can easily say that there is one target at 20 degree another one at 300 degree this is all that you will be seeing in a sonar display so this is a simulated display right only two targets very nice so what i am going to show you is in an actual situation how the display looks like so this is how this is an actual sonar display in the real ocean so there will be some uh, out of this some 10 15 targets you might be interested only in one others will be some maybe fishing boats it could be oil rigs or some other marine mammals so all such uh, unwanted noise creates in right so your uh, duty is to track in this sort of a quarter there is one difficulty which we actually face then other issues are even though we assume that okay everything is normally distributed gaussian but practically if you go and record some noise it will be nowhere near right but there is one reason why we assume the noise to be normal okay um can you tell why it is there is something which you have learned when clue i'll give you there will be lot of noises hundreds and thousands of noises adding together i will learn central limit theorem padichittunda at least statistics students ille what does that say what does that say for your random variables if you keep on adding of course there are conditions like iid distributed all as a so but at the end of the day if you add all those random variables what you are going to get is normally distributed and that is what we practically use that's why we go for gaussian assumptions okay but in reality it need not be exactly gaussian so our assumptions might fail and that will result in error in our estimates okay then convergence time okay so uh, yeah i didn't tell you about filter initialization so uh, the prior probability distribution we start with a prior distribution and then we go for the posterior right sorry uh, from the from posterior distribution at k minus 1 and then we predict the prior distribution and then it continues now what happens initially at time zero you don't have any information avare endu cheyyu you start with some random assumptions okay and over time what happens is uh, that uh, i show you do you want term no z minus z cap the difference between the actual measurement and your predicted measurement 
right so that that is actually the term which drives the system initially that innovation term is why yeah, that's called innovation term that will be very high slowly it will come down come down and finally it will converge to the actual solution okay so the time taken to converge onto a reliable solution that is a very very critical point so suppose there is a target i am talking in an actual war scenario there is a target out there he is going to fire at you you can wait here but you can not get a can not get a can not get a right so that time is very critical okay then confidence level of the solution okay fine you studied all the filters and the estimation but you you gave a solution and how do you say that this is a reliable solution unless you know the ground truth okay so when you give out a solution you have to give some confidence level to the solution so how do you find a confidence level to your solution that is another i mean it's an open problem it is a problem which researchers can work on right now optimum on ship maneuver as uh, as we study our own ship has to do a maneuver in order to latch up on a reliable solution and okay. then only our non homogeneous equation becomes homogeneous and you find out right okay, what do you call a unique solution okay now what is the best maneuver that you can take thoni pole maneuver yan pattilla re road like yani ki some ee chettu pullar ingane pona kandittilla ee kodugu polatha bike le duke what do you call that ingane ingane ship le maneuver yan pattilla it has its own limitations right so what is the within those constraint what is the best maneuver that you can take it's a constraint optimization problem right again is an open problem which can be worked on again the maneuver limitations like uh, especially submarines and all which is moving under water it be very slow some uh, 3 nautical miles 4 nautical miles as speed le bomb to unless it is a nuclear submarine okay so and its maneuverability like it cannot take a sharp turn and all so it, it to, for a submarine to take a 180 degree turn it will take almost 10 minutes 5 to 10 minutes so that is uh, even again that again uh, uh, affects your time for convergence only if this maneuver is complete you will be able to converge on to a reliable solution right again those are the practical limitations and during this maneuver like right, this is a picture of uh, a aerial view of a submarine it's an indicative view only your uh, sensor will be placed at the top end or the front end now all this red areas are blind areas for the submarine okay so because because of the body of the submarine targets coming in this blind area may not be detected so ningala when you do the maneuver when you change your course if the target goes into this blind zone again you are gone okay so these are some of the practical challenges that we address while developing a bearing only tracking system so in a uh, nutshell what have we learned basics of bearing only tracking at least i hope you have got some idea of what is bearing only tracking then we saw the geometry of bot how it is modeled as a linear dynamic system then the state estimation both classical and bayesian we looked at one then kalman filter uh, what it is we have looked we skipped this part uk and i am so okay and also we saw what are the practical challenges right so uh, this is what i wanted to uh, present in this talk in a nutshell or anyway actually these are the reference for uh, reference material for what i have presented lots of literature is available just if you google bot in uh, some n number of papers you will get you can go through that uh, if you find it interesting uh, you can any time come back to me i'll be happy to help uh, and if you have any questions i will take so that's it from my side and uh, uh, thank you the department of mathematics st thomas college for giving this opportunity to present in the view and uh,
I hope I have done justice to the topic. Uh, my intention is to not to teach everything to you, but if you feel that whatever you are studying in your curriculum, it has some application here, then I am satisfied. Like, don't think that uh, whatever theorems or results you study, it is simply what you call uh, no use and all. Don't never think like that. Everything, everything what you study will have some application of the other. Like somebody was asking, what is the difference between pure maths and applied maths? Like, there is no difference at all. There is only applied maths and math waiting to be applied. Whatever you study has gone so far that uh, science and technology has to wait another 10 or hundreds of years for that uh, uh, to see that applied. Okay. So all the best. Uh, best wishes to each and every one of you. If you have any questions, you can take or oh, thank you. Do you have any doubts or questions? Anything, any questions you can ask, either related to this or anything. Either everybody have understood everything or nobody has understood anything. So, the picture of the the system um, There is something called the third array sonar the concept and initial slides the number. Third array is one the shadow. Shift in the paragula, half kilometer long cable which it is the sonar. That is called the third array sonar. Plus, shift in the hull in the other sonar and down. Here and the sonar will attain almost you half kilometer or one kilometer difference. Here and the sonar will simultaneously use the angle, no manual than the ocean. We can directly get the range of the target, provided the target is sufficiently close. We want to do the target angle again that way because this array separation has to be uh, significant with respect to the actual range. Now, we have the sonar will be in a system center. Uh, there are uh, systems in the, uh, with two sonars. So that will take care of the blind area also. To some extent, uh, uh, issue uh, like, uh, any target that is at around 90 degree, well, around 90 detecting. Which has the end fire level uh, detect the gene, but the accuracy will be very, very, very low. And uh, to your question. Uh, there is something called a sonar suit. Sonar suit is one of the other. the modern submarines like that. One of the actually is sonar. One of the sonar is one of the other. Purpose is like there will be flank. Flank is one of the submarine body. Here I will show. Yeah. This, is, this will be the main sonar. There will be a sonar here like this. And the linear sonar is here. Here the front is here. Parabola sonar will do what you call a suit or a coat. I mean, an integrated suit to Maria. Pamenta sonar will own plus ranging in a healthy another toad array plus all mounted area. Any questions? Yes, not directly related to the topic, but uh. This, uh, these things use things like sonar and there are aquatic mammals that use the same thing. So won't these submarines and all affect the life, aquatic life? It does affect. Actually, um, in submarines it is limited. But in ships and all, uh, I told ships will be transmitting a sound signal, right? But this transmission will be of very high power. And this causes uh, disturbance to marine life. In fact, uh, when we go for field trials, we can see, like, when we try to transmit them, some field trials are going to be able to do it. So, um, this transmission, there are some international organizations, Greenpeace is one of the organizations, so, 
if you if they come to know that you are transmitting they will come and tell you uh, ask you to stop it so now because because of our own security reasons we can't do that but uh, nowadays uh, some of the modern sonars adile endha cheyya chala this transmission directly full power le transmit cheyada vikiram initially they will uh, do a very low power transmission so as to deter all the marine animals in and around that region and then slowly the transmission power will be increased agane cheyumba endha donne chala the transmission power increase in and so all the mammals will flood away from that region then you start full power transmission so as you correctly said it affects marine mammals any other question i think there is no other questions is there anyone who cannot follow me no? ini ende duty ennu parayunnathu ivide vote of thanks ennulla oru karatha theeramana naan 2004 ile കൊച്ചിൻ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് സയൻസ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജിയിൽ പോസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാജുവേറ്റ് സ്റ്റുഡൻ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്ത് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു ആദ്യത്തെ ആഴ്ചയിൽ തന്നെ ഡോക്ടർ വിജയകുമാർ സാർ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് നാല് നാല് ഫോർമർ സ്റ്റുഡൻസിനെ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തി തന്നു ദിസ് ഇസ് ശ്രീകാന്ത് ദൻ നിഷ ദിസ് ഇസ് മുരളി ആൻഡ് ശ്രീലക്ഷ്മി നാല് പേരെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തി തന്നു ആൻഡ് ഹി ടോൾഡ് അസ് ദാറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ മേക്ക് ദം എ റോൾ മോഡൽ അതിനുശേഷം പിന്നെ ഞങ്ങൾ സെക്കൻഡ് ഇയർ ആയി പറഞ്ഞു ഇതിൽ രണ്ടുപേര് ഒരുമിച്ച് തന്നെ ഡി ആർ ഡി ഒയില് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തു എന്ന് ശ്രീകാന്ത് ശ്രീകാന്ത് സാറും നിഷ മാമും അപ്പോൾ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് മനസ്സിലായി എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് വിജയകുമാർ സാറ് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഇവരെ നാല് പേര് ഇങ്ങനെ കാണിച്ചു തന്നത് എന്ന് തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും അവരെ ഒരു റോൾ മോഡൽ ആക്കാനൊന്നും പറ്റിയിട്ടില്ല എന്നാൽ പോലും വളരെ അഡ്മിഷൻ വളരെ അഡ്മിറേഷനോട് കൂടി തന്നെ കണ്ടിരുന്ന ആൾക്കാർ തന്നെയാണ് ഇവരുടെ ഒരു ഒരു ടീമായിരുന്നു നല്ല രീതിയിൽ മുന്നോട്ട് പോയിരുന്ന ഒരു ടീമായിരുന്നു ഇവരുടേത് അപ്പൊ അന്ന് മുതൽ വളരെ അഡ്മിറേഷനോട് കൂടി തന്നെയാണ് ഇവരെയൊക്കെ കണ്ടിരുന്നത് അതിനുശേഷം കഴിഞ്ഞ വർഷം ഞാൻ ഒരു വെബിനാർ അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്തപ്പോ ശ്രീകാന്ത് സാറിന്റെ ഒരു ടോക്ക് അവിടെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അന്ന് ഇമേജ് പ്രോസസ്സിങ്ങിനുള്ള മാത്തമാറ്റിക്സിനെ കുറിച്ചിട്ടാണ് സാർ അന്ന് ക്ലാസ് എടുത്തിരുന്നത് എനിക്ക് വളരെ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിട്ട് തോന്നി അന്ന് മുതൽ ശ്രീകാന്ത് സാറിനെ ഇവിടെ കൊണ്ടുവരണമെന്നും നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഒരു ടോക്ക് അറേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യണം എന്നും മനസ്സിലുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ക്ഷമ ഞാൻ അപ്രോച്ച് ചെയ്തപ്പോ ഇവർക്ക് ഡി ആർ ഡി ഒക്കെ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഒരു വർഷം ഇത്ര ടോക്ക് പുറത്ത് പോയി കൊടുക്കാൻ പാടുള്ളൂ എന്നൊക്കെ ലിമിറ്റേഷൻസ് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പൊ അത് ഓൾറെഡി കഴിഞ്ഞു പോയിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ദെൻ അപ്പൊ തന്നെ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു എനിക്ക് അടുത്ത അക്കാദമിക് ഇയറിൽ ഉറപ്പായിട്ടും ഞങ്ങളുടെ കോളേജിലേക്ക് ഒരു ടോക്ക് സാറിന്റെ വേണമെന്ന് ഈ ടോക്കിന്റെ ടോപ്പിക്ക് കേട്ടപ്പോഴും എനിക്ക് യാതൊരു ധാരണയും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല എന്താണ് ഈ പറയാൻ പോകുന്ന കാര്യം ടാർജറ്റ് ട്രാക്കിംഗ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞത് എനിക്ക് വലിയ ധാരണയൊന്നും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല ഇപ്പൊ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ധാരണയായി എന്ന് ഞാൻ പറയുന്നില്ല പക്ഷെ എന്നാ പോലും ഞങ്ങൾക്കും ഉള്ള ഒരു ഉദ്ദേശം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നിങ്ങൾ പഠിക്കുന്ന പല ടോപ്പിക്സും എങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ ഡെയിലി ലൈഫിലായാലും നമ്മുടെ ചുറ്റുപാടുകളിലായാലും ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നു ഇപ്പൊ തന്നെ നിങ്ങൾ കണ്ടിട്ടുണ്ടായിരിക്കും നമ്മുടെ ഡിഫറെന്റ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻസ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നു ദൻ ലീനിയർ മോഡൽസ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നു ദെൻ ലീനിയർ ഓൾജി ഗ്രാഫ് മെട്രിക്സ് ഒക്കെ വന്നു ലീനിയർ ഓൾജി ഗ്രാഫ് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ ഒരുപാട് നമ്മൾ പഠിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന പല കാര്യങ്ങളും അവിടെ അപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ ഇതുപോലെ ഒരുപാട് ഏരിയകളിൽ ഇനിയും നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റാത്ത രീതിയിൽ തന്നെ നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ ശ്രമിക്കാതെ തന്നെ മാത്തമാറ്റിക്സിന്റെ അപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഒളിഞ്ഞിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഇത് ഇത് ഐഡന്റിഫൈ ചെയ്യാന്നുള്ളതാണ് ആസ് മാത്തമാറ്റിക്സ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് നിങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു ഞങ്ങളുടെ ടാർജറ്റിനപ്പുറം അതായത് ഈ ഏരിയാസ് ഒക്കെ ഇങ്ങനെ വന്നു ഈ മാത്തമാറ്റിക്സ് ഇതൊക്കെ ഈ ഈ ഏരിയാസ് എല്ലാം ഇങ്ങനെ ടാർജറ്റ് ട്രാക്കിംഗിൽ ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതിനപ്പുറം ടാർജറ്റ് ട്രാക്കിംഗ് വളരെ മനോഹരമായിട്ട് തന്നെ ഇവിടെ പ്രസന്റ് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് സാറിനെ കൊണ്ട് സാധിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് എനിക്ക് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പെർസെന്റ് എല്ലാവർക്കും മനസ്സിലായി എന്നൊന്നും ഞാൻ ചിന്തിക്കുന്നില്ല എനിക്ക് അത്രയ്ക്ക് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പെർസെന്റ് ഉൾക്കൊള്ളാൻ എനിക്ക് പറ്റിയിട്ടില്ല നമ്മളങ്ങനെ റെക്കോർഡ് യൂട്യൂബിൽ ലൈവ് സ്ട്രീമിൽ പോകുന്നുണ്ട് നമുക്ക് വീണ്ടും വീണ്ടും ഈ ടോക്ക് കേൾക്കാൻ പറ്റും ദെൻ യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഒരു കുറച്ചും കൂടി ക്ലിയർ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഐഡിയ നമുക്ക് റിപ്പീറ്റഡ് ആയിട്ട് കേട്ടിട്ട് തന്നെ ഇതിൽ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഉറപ്പായിട്ടും ഈ ഒരു ക്ലാസ് ഈ ഒരു പ്രിപ്പറേഷന് വേണ്ട കാര്യങ്ങൾ
special thanks for it. So let's wait for lunch. Thank you.